and I'll pin myself and I'm going to share my screen. So hello and welcome everybody to this information uh, session today. My name is Lydza Dira. I use she, her pronouns. And today in this breakout room, we are going to be talking about two of our non-clinical bachelor programs. Um, these programs are community health and education or healthcare services management. So we talked about this a little bit in the, in the first room, but I'm just going to go over exactly what a bachelor's degree is and how you get there. So here at Central, we offer uh, continuing education, getting a GED or your high school diploma. After that, anything under 90 credits that you get a certificate um, is a certificate program. After you get 90 credits, you're prepared for your uh, associate's degree. And once you have over 90 credits, you're on your way to finishing up a four-year undergraduate bachelor's degree. So that is at the top of this pyramid here, you'll see the BAS, Bachelor of, uh, of Applied Science, um, and TED and HSM are the two programs we're looking at today. So to get into these particular programs, you need to have finished your associate's degree with at least a 2.5, or you need to be very close to finishing your associate's degree. Um, what is nice about these programs versus a different program and a bachelor program at a university is that A in the BAS. So the applied science part means that you are going to have a research slash service learning hands-on portion of your degree where you're going to be applying your um, professional goals or experience to what you're learning in the classroom. Some other bonuses about the, these programs at Central is that if you're already a student at Central, you get to continue being a student. You don't have to deal with all the transfer uh, malarkey. <laughs> and um, we have small class sizes, uh, no more than 30 students in a class. And it is a great value for the education. It is a bachelor's degree with about half to a quarter of the cost, depending on some of the other universities. So these two programs that we're looking at today, community health and education, healthcare services management, community health education, which we call CHED. So if you hear me say CHED, that's what I'm talking about. Um, so this is to help educate specific communities and groups about the wellness topics and disease and prevention. This is made for people who have an interest in healthcare or community or public health, motivated to reduce disparities and have a passion for EDIC work, which is equity, diversity, inclusion, and cultural awareness. Um, we are excited by this program because it gives people the skills really to develop any kind of education program, evaluation, and I mean, really, it's so diverse in where it could be applied. The healthcare services management is a little bit more specific because we're looking for people who already have a background in healthcare. One of the entry requirements for that healthcare services management track is about a year of paid experience. And that's because this is meant to help people, you know, uh, climb up the ladder for a promotion. Um, it's made for people who have a certificate and are just looking back to finish and get those, those leadership skills honed so that they can go out for that next level of, of job and professional improvement. Um, so uh, like I said before, um, you need 90 credits for an associate's degree and it's 180 credits for a bachelor's degree. So the way that is broken down is you have 60 credits of general education requirements. That's your English, your writing, your math, your couple of science classes, things like that. You're going to have a total of about 75 credits of electives, which are your own personal areas of interest classes, could be sociology, anthropology, could be more lab sciences or social science, could be theater or dance or a physical education class. And then there's 45 credits 
of what we call core curriculum. And core curriculum is what is required of that specific program. So 45 credits if you're in the healthcare services management program or 45 credits if you're in the community health and education program. Um, so yeah, so, so these are the requirements, entry requirements. Like I said, healthcare services management, you need about a year of experience. And with the community health and education, um, you just need a demonstrated interest or experience in healthcare. And that could even just mean academically. So there are also on the regular community health education track, there's also an option, a little, a little trail that's called the pre-PA track. And that is the pre-physician assistant track. Um, the biggest difference here is the GPA requirement. If you are planning on going into some kind of med school, PA school, nursing school, a 2.7, and it's even changing to about a 3.0, is the minimum requirement for these outside programs. So if you're planning on transferring to a PA school, you would need those 2.7 GPA requirements. But there's no difference in number of credits you need. It's really just the GPA requirement. This is the difference in the general education requirements. So in that first bit that we saw, the 60 credits, that's what this is. The difference here, again, is the GPA requirement. And rather than having a lot of uh, flexibility in the classes that you choose, you have a more specific biology class requirements. So for these two programs, there's uh, what we call our program learning outcome. This is what you will learn in all of our classes. So as you can see, the CHED program in comparison to the HSM program is more about individuals and specific influence on community and the people and how to better people's um, scenarios and what's, how to address things that are going on. The HSM program, Healthcare Services Management, is more about the administrative institutional side of these same issues. It's about how to organize, how to, how to staff, how to maintain financials. So it's a little bit more nuanced in the way um, that you're having to apply it to actual real life versus in the community health education is about researching and problem solving. So if you, were to get your degree in one of these areas, you could, with a community health and education background, you could become a health educator, project managers, clinical educators, uh, outreach. Um, the focus here is on education. And with this degree, you become eligible to take what's called a CHES exam, which is the Community Health Education Specialist exam. There is also a master's level exam that you could take after completing a master's program, which is a teaching credential in a healthcare setting. So that's very cool. Um, and along with the pre-PA options, um, if you complete that op that track, then you're eligible for the MedEx program at UW or basically any PA school. The healthcare services management, um, as previously stated, it is required that you have at least a year of experience, paid experience. So we are looking for people who want to be in administrative le leadership in a healthcare setting. So mainly what we've seen is healthcare administration people or um, healthcare analytics is becoming more popular or becoming more curious about it. Um, so the classes for these programs are, um, like I said, there's 45 credits. Now, we do offer a dual degree option program, which is really nice because there is some overlap. Um, so we have two information and research literacy classes that you could just take once for both programs or if you're just taking one or the other. Um, and then you could take your capstone simultaneously. So this just breaks down a little bit of what the curriculum would look like. Um, so for the community health and education, 
there's the principles class, health communication, social determinants of disease, health behavioral change and theoretical foundations, program planning and evaluation, and then community health needs assessment and improvement. And for healthcare services management, there's accounting for healthcare management, leadership and team building or organizational dynamics, a principles of healthcare services management class, a human resources class, financial management in healthcare, healthcare outcomes and quality management. So all of this is on top of the capstone project. Um, so the capstone project, this represents the culmination of student learning throughout the program. The students will take on a project using a faculty and or a community member to showcase the collective knowledge. Projects will be developed in collaboration with faculty and community member, members and mentors. The content varies based on the student's focus and a final presentation and paper will be completed in reflection of what you've learned in the program. So to go a little bit more into this, a capstone project is a uh, project that is completed in your final year as a student in the program. There is a one credit class offered in fall, a one credit class offered in winter, and a final three credit class offered in spring. In the first quarter, fall, you would be selecting your topic and beginning to research, uh, finding uh, articles or journals. In the second quarter, you would be formul formulating your argument and putting together your research. And in the third quarter, you then would present that final paper to your peers and your instructor. So you can see here how the classes are laid out. Something to be aware of with these programs is that they are not offered in a strict cohort model. So students do have flexibility here to um, go full-time or part-time, the biggest issue here that we run into is that these classes are only offered once a year. So you have to work very closely with your advisor with, with either of these programs would be me. And we have to come out up with a plan for you and stick to the plan or else they can push a student back an entire year. So you can kind of see how these are laid out. You learn about basic research and concept um, ideas. And then from there, you just build on it. So that's something nice about these classes is that once you're in these final curriculum classes, all of the information stacks on top of each other. You're going to be talking about things that all tie to the same theories um, and concepts. So that's really nice once you get into these upper division classes. Um, and then this is what it would look like if you decided to do the dual program where you did both HSM and CHED. So you, again, you'd only have to take those information literacy classes and research classes one time. You then would have the rest of those um, core curriculum classes and then you could do all of your capstone together as one big project between both programs. So that's really nice. Um, the difference here where everything falls is that rather than needing 75 credits of those um, electives, you would only need 40 because you'd be fulfilling the, that disparity between those two um, with those other extra um, core curriculum class. Um, they broke down uh, tuition in the main room. Uh, these are estimate for classes in the BAS program. It is um, something important to be noted is that it is a little bit more expensive to be taking bachelor level classes. And that is a, like a state accreditation um, level. We keep our tuition as inexpensive as possible, but even we have bosses <laughs> that, that um, you know, we aren't allowed to make it too cheap, I guess according to the state. Um, so some of the main questions that I get when I have these information se sessions are, is there flexibility? Is there options here? Yes, there's the dual program, there's the general track, there's the pre-PA. Um, if you wanna just take a class and see how it goes, it's you know not that those strict cohort models, you can go full-time, you can go part-time, you can take one class at a time. Um, 
we are accredited and we have students who go on to grad school. So um, those are the biggest questions that we get. Um, and I am going to stop recording now so that if anybody has any questions, um,